Well, hello there and welcome to this episode of the Terry Cole Show that I want to start with a question. Have you ever been in a situation where you're in pain, you're upset about something and the person who is supposedly trying to make you feel better says, well, at least it's not this. Listen, it could be worse. Anybody? Or maybe you're the person who is saying that to others. This is an example, different examples of emotional invalidation. So that is exactly what I'm going to be talking about in today's episode, because so much of the time we are the offenders in doing this. And even if your heart is in the right place, it's painful to other people for us to do that. So before we get started, if you happen to be new to this YouTube channel, please introduce yourself in the comments and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified whenever we roll out new videos to help you up level your joy and lessen your pain in life. That's what we do on this channel. If you don't know me, my name is Terry Cole. I'm a licensed psychotherapist, a relationship expert, and the author of Boundary Boss, which you can get at boundarybossbook.com. All right, I wanna say thank you so much before we even get into today's episode for all of your questions and your comments. You know I love it and I appreciate you and I love to highlight them. So today I'm highlighting a comment from Maureen Sharkey on the episode, How to Thrive as a Highly Sensitive Person. I learned so much about myself just now listening to you. If only I'd had this epiphany a half a century ago, it would have improved my life by just realizing I'm a highly sensitive person. And I'm sitting here thinking I'm okay with being sensitive. I like being a deep thinker and prefer it over the insensitive people I've come across who irritate me because they're not. I love the shady side of the street and the seat under an umbrella at a cafe. I'm an artist by profession and essence, so I guess this explains that as well. You're such a lovely speaker and woman and spirit. Thanks for being you. Well, Maureen, thanks for being you and thanks for being here. I really, really appreciate you and all of you who hang out with me on this channel all the time. So thank you. All right, let's move into today's content. We're talking about emotional validation and emotional invalidation. Now, again, let's establish what is emotional invalidation, right? This is when someone invalidates the way that you feel. And there's so many different ways that we can do this. So let's get clear about what validation is. Validation, this doesn't necessarily mean that you agree with the other person's, let's say, subjective reality, right? Validation simply allows the other person, like this emotional space to exist, that their feelings exist. And when we're invalidating someone for, for all the many reasons that I'm gonna get into in this episode, because it's not all like nefarious and mean reasons. It's not like that at all. Most of the time, for most of you, I would say the intention of you or the other person is not to invalidate. It's to uplift, it's to help, it's you, you want the person to feel better if they're upset about something. But when you think about validation itself, it is so incredibly important to the emotional health of our relationships to be emotionally validated. It is an incredibly important tool and there's a certain amount of love and acceptance when we can accept that that person is having that experience and not need to manipulate or change that experience. I was telling a story on Instagram the other day about my husband, Vic, when we were, I don't know if we were married yet, it doesn't matter. He would come pick me up from the train station and when he would be there, as soon as the train pulled in, I would be so happy. But then if he would be like 30 seconds late to pick me up, for whatever reason, I would have this amplified negative response where my feelings would be hurt. And I, in the beginning, I wouldn't say anything about it. I would just kind of be bitchy to him, you know, or say I'm tired or whatever, but I wouldn't say it. And then finally, I just told him, I know this makes no sense, but when you're not there, even though you're never really late, you're only a teeny bit, it just bums me out. So can you please just try to be there before the train pulls in? And again, I'm not blaming you because I know this crap makes zero sense and yet it's what I'm experiencing. And the emotional validation, his ability to go, okay, I will. And you know, 25 years later, the guy is never late because he cares about the way I feel. 
So again, if he had said to me, well, I'll agree with you, that's ridiculous. You have no reason to feel that way. I'm not even that late. If he was defensive, if he was mean, if he made it hard for me to share that, that would be emotionally invalidating. And again, keep in mind, I'm not saying we can blame other people for the way that we feel and then expect them to validate that. I'm talking about we are sovereign human beings. We are allowed to feel the way that we do, regardless of whether the other person understands why we feel that way or not. You always have this rule, like if you wanna be in my life, you cannot understand why I feel the way I do, but you definitely have to give a shit, for sure. You have to, or you can't be in the VIP section of my life because people who don't care about the way you feel are not emotionally safe people. So how do we become emotional invalidators, right? Why, why is this? Why does this exist and is so common in relationships? Well, part of it is what we saw and our lived experience as children. I mean, the classic a kid crying and the parent saying, quit crying or I'll give you something to cry about, right? That is like the quintessential invalidating the child's experience. And if this happens enough, I mean, this can really lead to some major mental health diagnoses like narcissistic personality disorder, borderline personality disorder. If you have a childhood that is filled with invalidation of your emotions, because then you are set up to look outside of yourself to get those emotions, like to, to have emotions, right? You're looking outside of yourself. You need all of this external validation because you don't trust yourself because you basically learned from parents, from whomever, whoever the, the adults in your life were, that how you feel doesn't matter and is inaccurate. You know, that's another thing. It's like, you don't have a right to feel that way. It's someone judging the way that we feel. So let's break it down into sort of adult relationships. We have what I would consider intentional emotional invalidation, which is like gaslighting, which is someone who has an agenda for denying your reality or for judging your feelings. And it's almost always emotional manipulation. So that again, falls into the category of emotional abuse, but there's a reason they want to keep their control over you, right? That's the reason why someone is doing that. Then we have the unintentional, which I would have to say, this is more times than not, at least in healthy, healthier relationships, this is what is happening. And if you identify as a high functioning codependent or a codependent, I'll quickly give you my definition of a high, high functioning codependent. It's when you're overly invested in the feeling states, the outcomes, the situations, the circumstances, the relationships of the other people in your life to the detriment of your internal peace, your emotional, financial, physical, spiritual well-being. It also means if you're a high functioning codependent, and I say high functioning, right? This is a term that I coined because the people in my crew were this because I was this. And the regular definition of codependency, which seemed to involve being involved with an addict, enabling behavior, which that is true with high functioning as well, but you don't have to be involved with an addict. If you're a high functioning codependent, you are doing all the things for all the people, trampling boundaries along the way, but you also are so highly capable that you make it look easy. And you're gonna be hearing a lot that I'm going to be talking quite a bit about high-functioning codependency because I'm writing my next book right now, which is about high-functioning codependency. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, if you're a high-functioning codependent, I promise you, you are in your desire to control the outcomes of others and the feeling states of others. You are emotionally invalidating people, most likely a lot, right? Someone comes to you with a problem, you want to fix that problem rather than be able to allow them to have those feelings. So it's it's a fine line when you see yourself as a helper or a real lover and you you know you're always willing to be part of someone else's solution, but again, this is where we really have to look at what is driving that willingness or that ability, that desire to help others. 
Is it because their distress is so distressing to you? Certainly that was my own experience in my 20s or even into my early 30s, most likely. So let's talk about what we can do. Let's talk about, we can make ourselves feel bad if we are emotional invalidators, or we can learn, right? We, we can evolve. We can learn something that will make our relationships more safe. Because I know that if this is you, you do not want to create an unsafe place. So the first thing is you have to deal with the fact that it exists. Do you find yourself hardcore looking for the silver lining? Are you like a silver lining detective no matter what someone says to you? Like, I'm so sad that Bob broke up with, with me. And a parent saying to the kid, well, at least now you'll have more time to spend with the family and you won't be in your room texting with Bob all day. That's invalidating the kid's feeling, right? They're sad. All they want is someone to care that they're sad. And instead it's like, or if someone, classic invalidation of feelings is someone saying, I'm so sad that my grandmother passed away. People will always say, how old was your grandmother? As if that matters. She was 93. Well, she lived a good long life. That does not make the morning person feel better. That makes you feel better, but it's, very emotionally invalidating. You might be devastated that a 98 year old passes away because you're that attached to them or you have a great relationship with them or whatever, right? And that's your feeling. Other ways of invalidating. Someone saying, I feel anxious. And your friends being like, get it together. We're going out anyway. Like you said, you'd go out. I don't know. What, what's your problem? Come on, let's go. It's not that bad. You saying, I'm worried about our debt to your partner and your partner just kind of sweeping it under the rug by saying, we'll just cut spending a little bit. It'll all, it'll all work out. It'll all be fine. Again, you're saying, I'm worried. It's not fine. And instead of your partner being able to be with that, to hear that, to validate that, they say, you're making a big deal out of nothing, basically. All of those things are emotional invalidation. And it hurts so much. And especially if you have, you know, in relationships, a lot of times you'll have one person who is more highly emotional and probably has a higher emotional IQ. And then the other person who does not have a high emotional IQ doesn't know how to deal with their own feelings. And that sets up emotional invalidation a lot because the person who doesn't have the skills doesn't know what to say. And so what they're saying does not feel good. So I think we have to first look at that validating someone else's emotional experience. It's not conveying that you're agreeing with them. It doesn't mean that you're communicating approval or disapproval, right? It's like you can validate without being like, I'm giving you the thumbs up on that emotion. You don't need to do that. Try not to become defensive. That's really hard when someone's talking about something that you did that might've hurt their feelings, but it's that, that really gets in the way of being emotionally validating to the other person. If you become defensive, you have to try to understand your person, but you have to do it for each other. And I think that that can be very difficult if one person is willing and the other person is not willing, right? Or, or not capable or, or denies that there's a problem. Because that's also emotionally invalidating, where you feel like there's an issue. I heard, you know, many times from clients that their partner would say, well, I don't have a problem. You have a problem. And if you're in a long-term relationship with someone and one of you has a problem with something that's happening within the relationship, uh, you know what? It's both of your problem, right? If it involves both of you. So there's something very invalidating about I would have clients asking their partners to get into couples therapy with them. And they'd be like, I'm not getting into therapy. I don't have a problem. You're the one with the problem. And it's so painful to deal with that. Harville Hendricks and his wife, Helen, came up with this way of, it's like uh, creating safe conversations and it's a process. But the really important steps in this process also create emotional validation. So the first one is you're mirroring for clarity and accuracy. So you begin building trust by basically saying, so if I heard you right, 
you're upset because I've spent this amount of money and didn't clear it with you. And it reminds you of when you were a child and what happened between your parents. Did I get that right? Right. That that's also their they they're also the creators of Imago Therapy, I M A G O. Many of you have heard of it, where they have a communication script pattern strategy that works because it starts with one person telling you what the problem is and the other person mirroring back because so much of the miscommunication, you can't validate someone if you don't understand what they're saying. So really starting with mirroring what the other person has said is amazing and then validating the other person's experience. So we do this, It listen, it differentiates us as individuals, right? While acknowledging that both of our experiences are valid, worthy of respect worthy of being talked about. It can't just be one one person's experience. It has to be both. So in validating, actually validating, because that could be confusing, we're saying, I can see how you feel that way. That makes sense to me. I understand what you're saying, right? And then the really probably the most important step in this whole entire process is empathizing, right? And what is this? We empathize with each other's feelings to better understand how to relate to each other in a healthy way, right? This is what creates the power of connecting, is empathizing, and it's not the same as sympathizing, right? Sympathizing is if you have a similar experience to that person, so their their experience resonates with you. Empathizing is working to put yourself in that person's position, trying to put yourself in their shoes, even if you've never been in their shoes, even if their situation does not resonate with you. And yeah, it takes a little bit of work to do that. And some of us, if you are a natural empath, then you do it naturally and automatically, right? I don't even want to do it half the time I'm doing it, but it just it's just the way that I'm wired. Like it's just the way that I am emotionally. And I know zillions of you are the same way. But if you're not, And if you're someone who has a tendency to try to control the feelings of others, and you may not identify with the way that I just described it, but what if you think about the last time someone came to you and was in pain? Can you see yourself inadvertently invalidating their emotions because you don't like that they're in pain and that their distress is so distressing to you? Because this learning how to emotionally validate the people that we love is so incredibly important and it's so important with kids, if you're parents, that they're allowed to have their feelings. That doesn't mean they're allowed to throw a chair across the room. It doesn't mean they're allowed to act it all out, but they're allowed to have them. And as a parent, you wanna create a safe space for them to have them. So I created a guide for you, terrycole.com forward slash guide. And I'll give you some, I'll give you the top things not to say like, wow, it could have been worse, right? That does not help. Or at least it's not that. That does not help. And then I'll give you some examples of emotionally invalidating examples and then what to say instead. So you can get that in the guide. I'd love to know what you think about emotional validation and invalidation. Have you been on the receiving end? Did you have any aha moments from this episode? Or have you been the one who wants to control things for others? Have you been the one invalidating other people's feelings? Not on purpose, but maybe you have that realization here. Please let me know in the comments. Find me on Instagram at Terry Cole. I hope you guys have an amazing week self-reflecting. And as always, take care of you.